Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to come here. I would like to uh, thank for the organizer for this great meeting. It's a great pleasure for me to be here and share with you from an uh, uh, enter enterprise perspective uh, on how a company can enable or leverage uh, te technology, technology innovation and business model innovation to expand the global trade. So first of all, um, I would like to uh, put you in the perspective, while well, uh, a lot of um, uh, reports on China's uh, uh, growth rate slows down, uh, we call it new normal. Uh, however, um, here I used a lot of data by the uh, third party, especially the uh, McKinsey. Um, we find that um, uh, these summarized China's trend as well in the future, there will be consumption driven, and uh, there will also be um, uh, more uh, e-commerce uh, business model. So um, from the conclusion, we can say that China is still in the transition period. So for the first half of the year, uh, we find out that the uh, consumption contributed 73.4% of the GDP. However, if we look at the export, previously China um, was the export driven, or, or export is one of the drivers for the China's economic growth. But for the first half of this year, um, the export actually contributed uh, a negative 10% uh, to China's GDP. At the same time, we also find that in the transition, in the transition, the, uh, the tertiary industry employment is going up. The manufacturing uh, sector is stable in the employment, and of course the, the, the agriculture sector uh, employment is going down. It means that uh, more and more um, uh, rural population will be urbanized and uh, the, the total factor productivity in China will be still improved. So the conclusion can be that uh, China will change from the global factory uh, in the past decade to perhaps the global consumption hub. So if we compare the other data, well, China has already been uh, the largest um, e-commerce uh, market in China. Um, uh, if we compare the, the normal retail with the uh, e-commerce and even cross-border e-commerce, we find that uh, last year, the China's retail growth uh, grew about um, more than 10%. However, the e-commerce retail grew 30, 33%. Uh, percent, and whereas uh, cross-border e-commerce, it's doubled. And last year, China's normal trade um, importation uh, decreased actually more than 13%. But the new business model of cross-border e-commerce importation doubled. So if we compare the adoption of the consumers of these uh, uh, new business models, we find out that uh, uh, both on the uh, customer per, um, uh, adoption rate and uh, for those uh, sales value of these categories, um, it's um, going up and up. Uh, before I go to the, um, to the company, I will uh, elaborate uh, a little more on the uh, cross-border e-commerce. Uh, we are talking about e-commerce. It's a um, it's, um, um, definition that everyone has different perspectives. Um, um, well, in China, the cross-border e-commerce uh, means something more. Uh, previously, in the... Uh, uh, Amazon business model or in the eBay business model, cross-border e-commerce means that you buy the things from the, um, the global website and uh, uh, you order the products, you pay the products, and then the products were sent to, you, sent to you in parcel or in post, and you receive that. And the, time lead, the lead time will be perhaps uh, two weeks or, or, or one week. However, um, we, uh, the internet companies or cross-border e-commerce uh, players like us, we lobby the Chinese government. And the Chinese government says that from consumers' perspective, they want better 
user experience. And then the Chinese government set, uh, opened seven cities in China so that for the cross-border e-commerce, we can pre-import based on our big data, uh, based on pro our projection of the potential consumer needs. And we import pre-imported goods and put the goods in the uh, bonded area warehouses in China when we uh, have the customers order on our website with their payment, with the uh, true delivery uh, um, uh, order, then we send the products uh, to the consumers from, from China in the bonded warehouses. So it shortened the lead time to about three days or even in the tier one cities, even one or two days. So when we are talking about um, cross-border e-commerce, we are talking about this new business model, uh, which, is, which means that not only the parcel importation, but also the uh, pre-importation um, in the bonded area warehouses in the seven cities in China. So come to NetEase. Um, NetEase uh, has been the, the, the rider, uh, has been the successful uh, rider in the internet. Um, in China, it was set up in 1997 and then go to US and listed there. And uh, financially, we have been successful um, all the way. Well, actually last year, NetEase uh, stock was the best performer in NASDAQ and we are number one, Facebook was number six. And we have been successful in building a series of uh, immersive apps uh, online. Uh, we are the largest email service provider in China with users over 840 million and we are the largest game developer and publisher um, uh, uh, in China. Uh, by the way, last year, um, um, iPhone ranked um, uh, our game app as the most revenue generating uh, game app on iOS platform globally. And of course, we are news portal. And why I mention that? because I'm, I'm going to talk about, we call that e-commerce 3.0. Because previously, when we are talking about e-commerce, people go to the uh, uh, computers and based on search, you find what you want. But nowadays, 85% of the online shoppers do the transaction on mobile phones. So when you are on mobile phones, you need to have the immersive apps to keep the people always online. When you are using mobile phones, you can imagine what apps makes you constantly online and frequently check. So we are talking about the global platforms. Uh, actually, Facebook uh, almost have 1.6 uh, billion uh, users, and at the same time, one third of the global SME uh, have their website there. It means that, well, the global consumers can easily have the access to the companies previously difficult to 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 reach. Well, for Netis, we have uh, uh, big platforms like. Uh, email platforms so can reach uh, 840 million uh, users and we have um, a news portal can reach 700 million users and and the game portal of course Alibaba is there and uh, Skype is there Amazon is there these these um, uh, platforms we can regard them as information infrastructure to connect the users with the suppliers, these are the things that are changing the world. So um, actually, NetEase has been successful in the, um, uh, in the mobile apps in the, in the internet world. And we just started uh, cross-border e-commerce because we believe that China has entered a stage um, uh, with the growing middle class who want not only want to produce for the for for the for the for the world, but also want to consume the global brands uh, from the world. 
So that's why we started the business um, uh, one year uh, before, but just, just after uh, more than uh, one year, we become the number one in the cross-border e-commerce. So as I mentioned that, why we call that 3.0 platform? Because we have so many immersive and successful uh, internet apps to serve information, communication, um, uh, finance, um, the um, uh, dating, and online education, and um, uh, online news, or whatever you can imagine. And uh, with this, we understand our customers' profiles much better than uh, the others, and we have multiple channels to, to interact with the customer purchasing decision journeys. So um, the, the moderator asked me to talk more on the um, consumer side. Yeah, from consumer side, of course, it's important to have the platform to get your suppliers to get MSEs on, on your platform. You need to have the payment platforms. You need to have instructors to do the delivery, the fulfillment centers. But one more thing is also important that how you can make your customers or consumers accept those products by the SMEs. That's uh, always a challenging issue. Previously, we think that let them search, but nowadays we think that on the mobile phone, search is not the best solution. Perhaps the best one is to promote the right product at the right time at the right play, uh, at the right price, based on your immersive apps. So everything is on the mobile. So you need to use big data and AI to make your uh, mobile um, platform uh, customized. Uh, so you also need to, of course, to, to break the, the information gap between the uh, uh, buyers and the suppliers. So. Uh, especially online, you know, in the online world, we combine the commodity or good service with the digital service. We call that uh, scenario lifestyle. Everybody knows that uh, online, when online buying, not only you buy, uh, you, you, you uh, do the necessity consumption, you also do the, um, um, let's say, uh, discretionary uh, consumption. You also have to do, uh, sometimes you do the aspirational consumption. So. It uh, depends on the uh, online scenarios, uh, different um, apps. So, because I mentioned that China's government uh, experimented uh, um, the support policies in the uh, bonded area warehouses in China, all these um, um, goods we pre-import will enjoy the preferential um, policies, uh, like we don't need to be uh, compliant with the local standards, we can enjoy the uh, zero tariffs. Um, um, so it, um, the cross-border e-commerce platform can be a good enabler uh, for the global trade. Um, um, yeah, this I will skip over. Yeah, this I will. So uh, at last but not least, I would like to uh, share my uh, questions um, uh, with the panelists, yes. Well, the e-commerce is something that, cross-border e-commerce is something that we aggregate the individualized, the fractioned, and um, uh, decentralized uh, demands of, from the consumers to the global supply. However, in the, uh, in the existing um, uh, mechanisms or global trade institutions, how we can support this new business. Thank you.